Hello, it's good to see you again, and I trust that you're very glad to see me again. Today, we're going to be discussing a book whose importance and influence cannot be overstated. That is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Okay, so before I proceed, I want to say something. If you're not interested in hearing any of the introduction or overview portion of this video, if you just want to delve straight into the meat of it, look down into the comment section below. I'm providing a timestamp in which I actually begin to delve into those ideas and those key takeaways, right? The, the actual meat of the video, right? So anyways, without further ado, I read this book earlier this year. So March of 2022 is when I finished it, okay? And upon finishing it, I immediately thought to myself, wow, this is a book that I would read again which for me personally is not a common occurrence, okay? So there are several books that I would recommend to anyone. This is not one of those books that I would recommend anyone to read, to merely read. I would recommend that you study this book, okay? And I'm not saying that you should study it solely because it is culturally and historically significant. I'm saying that you should study it because it is practical and because it is useful, which is equally, if not more, important, okay? So, <clears throat> that being said, my intentions with this video are not to provide a de detailed review of this book, okay? Not my intentions. My intentions are to provide a, just some commentary, thoughts, general opinions, and key takeaways, again. So, if you're looking for that, I'm your guy. If not, not your guy. You might as well click off this video, okay? So, Firstly, just to provide some a little overview or background on the book, this is a treatise on war, okay? So it is written within the frame of ancient warfare. So if you were a military strategist living in ancient times and you happen to get your hands on this book, you could basically treat it as a handbook on war, right? You could literally look at it and be like, hmm, what did Sun Tzu say to do in this situation? You know, and, and basically apply it in that sense. However, although it was written within the context of ancient warfare, there are two things immediately that stand out about the ideas and concepts that are presented throughout the book, right? Firstly, that they are timeless, okay? So there are some things that are presented that are a bit antiquated or obsolete, and of course we can all acknowledge this, but for the most part, everything that you read and everything that is presented and understood can be understood in a modern context. For the most part, more or less, more or less. The other part that stands, about, that stands out about the ideas and concepts presented is that they are universal. And what I mean by that is that they apply to various application scenarios and context. So for example, this book is useful not only to the military strategist, the modern one that is, but also to business people and to athletes. Basically any sphere or environment in which you can imagine a sort of competitive atmosphere, an atmosphere in which there are opposing forces, opposing wills, or contention or conflict, this book is useful for that. Okay, so Without further ado, I'll go ahead and actually delve into the actual uh, ideas and key takeaways, right? And these are not in any particular order. Also, if I seem a bit scripted, that is because, again, I have, <laughs> I have this because I didn't want to forget anything. Okay, so let's begin with one of the first and most notable things that's presented by Sun Tzu or the author which is his emphasis upon estimating, calculating, and accounting for various variables, actions, outcomes, and the consequences of those actions and outcomes, okay? So Sun Tzu places a huge emphasis upon gathering knowledge, upon understanding, upon trying to sort of figure out mentally beforehand, before actually engaging in warfare, engaging in battle, 
having a course of action or strategy in mind. And not only having that course of action or strategy in mind, but considering how it may fail or what may occur to sort of throw it off course, okay? So one of the things that I recall, and I may not quote it perfectly, but I think that Sun Tzu said something along this lines. He said, there are no certainties in war. There are no certainties in warfare. In other words, he conceives war not so much as a science, not so much as here's a formula that you can follow and certain rules that you can do and it'll always guarantee you certain outcomes and certain uh, results. He doesn't conceive war this way. And that's why the title is awfully indicative in itself. It's because the art of war, he conceives war as an art, okay? So it's in a sense, it's kind of philosophical and that and that's one of the greatest appeals about it for for me personally, okay? So I think we can all recognize the importance of estimating, calculating, and accounting for various variables, actions, and outcomes, right? So I won't spend any more time discussing that. I think you can get the point. <laughs> The um, second thing that I wanted to discuss was deceitfulness, all right? Now, I like this one because it has some pretty huge implications psychologically as well as morally and ethically, right? Basically, one of the key themes or takeaways that I got reading this book is that Sun Tzu emphasizes that we ought to always keep the enemy or our opponent out of the know, right? If your enemy, if your enemy thinks of you one way, appear the opposite way, okay? So this helps and aids in making your enemy less capable of overwhelming you, overcoming you, and subduing you because they are unsure of what you really are, your state of being, your course of action, your strategy, your plans, anything that you have have at play and have lined up, right? They're unaware of it. So the, the the less aware they are, the less knowledge that they have that they can rely upon and that they can trust and use in order to thwart you, the better off you are, right? So there's that point. And then also the third point, Again, I'm probably gonna misquote this, but Sun Tzu basically says something along these lines. He says, the acme of skill in warfare is exhausting as little resources as possible and exerting as little effort as possible to subdue your enemy. Now, of course, a lot of us would think that the way to, or a way, or a method to subdue one's enemy would be to overwhelm the enemy with brute force by exhausting as many resources as possible, right? Sun Tzu says you should not do this. The foolishness of that approach is that it is wasteful. It is not necessary. Sun Tzu sort of has this opinion that we ought to do what is only necessary and only precise and appropriate for every situation, outcome, scenario, etc., right? And so with that, he says that the highest form of warfare is in fighting war sort of in a in a background sense, in a behind the scenes sense, right? If you can met figuratively defeat your enemy without lifting a finger, right? If you can defeat your enemy in such a way that you actually don't even have to fight your enemy, that is the acme of skill in warfare. That is the highest form of generalship, okay? And I think this, I think this brilliant, not only because, well, one, it seems obviously practical. And like I said, it acknowledges that the, uh, the contrary would be wasteful, right? But also because of its political and financial implications, right? So if you're a general and you're fighting on behalf of your sovereign or your country, you want to acknowledge that the well-being of your, your sovereign or your country or, you know, your men, right? Their well-being depends upon your ability to execute in a way that is wise, in a way that makes the most sense, right? And obviously, I think that if you minimize utilizing resources and exerting effort, your own people are better off, right? So there's that, there's that aspect of it too. The last key takeaway before I end this video, <laughs> the last key takeaway 
and one that ties directly into the one that I just discussed is the key to defeating one's enemy is in exploiting his or her weakness, not necessarily capitalizing upon your own strengths. I love this emphasis because it it helps us it helps us to redirect our focus <clears throat> helps us to redirect our focus not so much on ourselves and how we can do something in order to yield a certain outcome or result not so much about us right it focuses more on okay what is it about my enemy that is vulnerable what is it about my enemy or my opponent that i can exploit okay so the reason i think the reason why it is superior to the contrary approach is probably because most people or most enemies at least you know let's let's take it in in a hypothetical format right if you're in if you're in a war in a battle your enemy is probably solely focused on what they can do to subdue you they're not so much focused on what their own weaknesses are right now some may right i think i think a wise formidable opponent would be but I think the vast majority of times, if you find yourself in a competitive environment, your your opponent is thinking of, how can I make myself strong? How can I build myself up? How can I make myself invincible? How can I make myself um, incapable of being subdued, right? Rather than that, you study your enemy and know your enemy well enough that you probably even know them better than yourself, at least as far as their weakness and strengths are concerned, right? So there's that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically all I had. I'm sorry I wasn't as graceful and as eloquent as I may have been in other videos, especially other book reviews, I mean, book videos, excuse me. Um, to sort of give an outro, I want to say this book is impressive. The author is impressive because although it was written in ancient times, like I said, the ideas and concepts presented are timeless and universal and i i hardly scratched the surface like i said i i just provided a like a a few key points and takeaways right but you could really do an in-depth review and series on this book and still find numerous insights to gather from it all right so that being said um i appreciate you if you stuck if you stuck around this far and you watched the entire video thanks i applaud you for your dedication <laughs> if you have any thoughts opinions comments etc as always i'm open to hearing that and also if you have read this book or if you read it um and you, you want to come back and, and revisit us you know then leave your comments about the book itself and you know my the, the things that i discussed right i would love to hear your opinions all right so i appreciate you once again for watching uh thank you for sticking around I hope that you have a great day, week, night, whenever you're watching this, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.